I don't even like to cut it um, when we're doing it. I don't like to cut it very much. I, I like I like a good raw talk. Um, okay. Raw talk. Here we go. Yeah. Take one. Um, <laughs> this is my guest Denise Drews, um, and she's an idol of mine. I don't mean to embarrass you. <laughs> she's she's an idol of mine. I remember I'm a I'm a farm kid. I'm a country kid. I came from northern Utah, and I would come down to the big city sometimes. Salt Lake was the very big city for us. So I would come down here and um, I was really interested in the fitness world and in the fitness business and um, I would come into this really cool place on the Triad Center and it was called Anatomy Academy and I remember, I never met you, but I remember your picture on the wall and I remember that you were the owner um, and I followed you kind of from afar and I would always tune in to Anatomy Academy and, and that's just where I heard of you in the years that I've been doing this, and that's been a lot now. Um, man, I, I hear you're everywhere doing everything, and I'm a, I'm a great admirer, and I just want to thank you for coming on and to, to share with us. And thank you. Thanks for having me on. It's um, I feel the same. I watch what you're doing, and I have a great deal of admiration and respect for what you're doing in the community as well, for the way you change people's lives and the message that kind of drives what you're doing. I've, I have a deep respect for you as well. So Thank it's you. That, a, it's that a pleasure means, to be here. That means a ton to me. I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. I've got a lot of things I want to cover today. Okay. Um, I think before we do cover that, I, I want to just sort of get out of the way where um, we can find you. Mm. I'm not going to go into all your accomplishments. It would be too long. I'm too old for that. Let's knock it off. <laughs> Let's uh, just do like this year's accomplishments. <laughs> here's what we ought to do. Just take my word for it. If you trust me, take my word for it. Denise is the real deal. I wouldn't have her here otherwise. And there's a lot of places to find her. A yeah. lot of places. So let's start with some of those um, at Denise Drews on Instagram. I, I follow you. Yeah, just there. my name. In fact, if you Google Denise Drews, you'll find all of my websites and, and everything. Plus a whole bunch of old, ridiculously funny. Um, like yesterday, I got a notice that there's a Denise Drews uh, thigh tamer, <laughs> like this old thigh master that they put my name and my picture on, marketed somewhere in China. So who knows what you'll find when you Google my name? <laughs> I feel like you should be offended by that, but I got to tell you, if I ever had anybody put my name on anything and think it was valuable, I would think that was cool. All right. Well, especially if I could get paid for that. But hey, so uh, <laughs> but the best way to find me is straight up my website, denisedrews.com, okay. and then there are links to all my social. So. Okay. Okay. And yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Listen, we're not going to spend a ton of time, trust me, that she is um, what I say she is and more. And what I'm, here's what I'm interested in today. I want to explore your career and I want to touch base on certain aspects of the career. Like where did you get started? Um, what are some of the secrets that you've learned over the years, if you've learned any? Um, have, uh, do you have anything that you do now that's way different from before? Um, and I'd, I'd like to sort of just talk about, I've, I've learned that one of the things for me is um, I, I've learned that just hearing about how a pro did it, how an expert did it, is information that I can really use. Okay. I can glom on and I like it a lot better in general than advice. I, I want to see what you did and how you did it. And then I've noticed through the years that we've gone that your career has morphed and you're heavy into yoga now mm -hmm. um, and um, you're, you're I don't speak with a yoga instructor that didn't come from, from you mm -hmm. she trains them she creates yoga instructors mm -hmm. yeah. and everybody has a tie at least in this valley has a tie to D Denise if you're interested in yoga and you do a lot of cool things with your yoga stuff we need to make sure that folks understand that and yeah I know out yeah. of the prison you're, yeah. you're out of the prison yeah. there's certain charities you're involved in mm -hmm. and um, I want to talk about those okay too great get there's there. a lot here right a lot let's start here um, okay. where where did it all start well, why did you want to become a fitness expert and I want to distinguish those two things because anybody yoga. can be no uh, anybody can be a fitness professional anybody can get paid to do this but not many are experts mm. so where did you begin your journey um, when I was about three years old I knew really? I wanted to be a teacher I just I never played house I always played school line up all my stuffed animals slash friends and I had this desire to teach 
pass something on. And I didn't have anything to pass on then. Yes. Um, but that has never left me. And so um, in high school, I was in, into dance. And right out of high school, I got a job at a health club. And they needed a teacher. They needed a fitness instructor. This was 1981. Mm -hmm. And Jane Fonda was in full oh, force. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, so I had no experience other than seeing her videos. And I jumped out onto the shag carpet and put on some leg warmers and I taught an aerobics class, like literally around the, you know, the center station, that universal equipment that we used to have, it yeah. was, you know, all, yeah, yeah, all yeah. around. So we just kind of had five women there and we just bounced around the equipment. And um, the smiles on their faces underneath the sweat, just I, there's something clicked in me, like I want to do this. And um, I just got emotional right there because that, that was like, uh, it, it just really like, okay, this is where I'm headed. And so I um, went to college, studied health education um, to be a teacher. All through college, I taught fitness classes. I went to Utah State and uh, they let me use a wrestling me gym. Me too. I'm Are you an Aggie? Aggie? Yes. All right, high five. Standing. True Aggie? True, yes, I am a true okay. Aggie, as a matter of fact. <laughs> okay. Um, so I got this wonderful opportunity there. They let me use a wrestling gym and charge people a dollar a class. And I got to the point up there where I had 80 people coming in to do aerobics. It was like yoga is now. Yeah. So all these big outdoor classes that you see now, that's what it was then for oh, fitness. Oh, I remember it. Yeah, I remember so it. I put myself through college just teaching aerobics classes. Mm -hmm. um, so fast forward, I graduated, I started a company of corporate wellness right out of college mm -hmm. and um, started just going into companies, teaching fitness and doing fitness assessments. Um, probably made better money during those two years than the rest of my career. Um, but I had 20 corporate clients going at one time. This was in 1989. Wow. And um, you have to let me put that in perspective. Yeah. Um, you have to remember that in 89, yeah. nobody cared. No. The the health and the wellness community wasn't that big. No, it the wasn't a corporate thing. wellness. It was if it didn't have to do with the widgets we make, we don't want to hear about it. Yeah. It's not profitable and there were a lot of studies back then that could point to why you do it. So for you to get twenty in this town? Yeah. It, yeah. We got a couple amazing. of government contracts that paid the bills. We went to the US Forest Service and there was a little bit of precedence in especially in the Bay Area. They were like um, Toyota, Pacific Bell, Esprit, some of those bigger companies were doing some really like pioneering corporate wellness. So I, I could point to them. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that was fun. And then I had all these clients all over the place and I had this brilliant knot idea that maybe it would be fun to own a gym and then all these people could come here to me so i opened a gym called anatomy academy as you said 1989 and one by one i let go of all my corporate clients because the gym became consuming um that took 20 years 20 years for it to become consuming no no that took 20 years of my life yeah. to run health clubs yeah um so i'm just kind of doing face, the timeline like, yeah yeah yeah, so um, I'd never trade it in a million years. So when you ask, how did you get to be a fitness expert? I feel like all of those were stepping stones. Yeah. I feel like this is a marathon and every experience that I had, including opening and closing gyms, put me in a position of consumer trust. You know, I knew, I knew, I know now how to help you open a business because right. I've done it and I've done it wrong and I've done it right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, all of that led me to where I am now, which is my body's aging. I went through cancer. Um, now, I, now yoga is what heals me. Mm -hmm. So that I put all of that energy into teaching people how to teach yoga and getting people into yoga. Start way back in the beginning. What was fitness for you when you, in the height of, of the first part of the, the gym career and, and wellness and that? What was fitness to you? Did you have it defined? Was it something that you could package up at hand to somebody? What were your thoughts on, okay, about hindsight, fitness back then? I'll be super honest. Uh, it was about looking good in thong leotards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'll ever make a comeback. We, we I don't see a lot sure of that. hope not, because I want to apologize to everyone publicly that had to to do that. Had stand to behind that. me when I was wearing oh, one of those. <laughs> uh, no, like 
I think it's like yoga now. So many people do yoga because they want a yoga butt. They yeah. want toned arms. They want rock hard abs. As a young person, that was my motivation. Okay. The more that I, um, the more that I did it, and I started teaching to older people. I started teaching to people who had been injured or overweight people that lost a lot of weight. Then I started to really get like, this is quality of life. This is what you do if you want to have a better um, recreational life. If you want to be better at work, if you want to have a better relationship, you've got to take care of this vehicle that you're born into. And so it, then that became my message. Like we can change the world by helping people feel better in their own skin. Isn't it weird how a lot of us go to that? Because that was me too. Yeah. And to start it off, I can put rock hard six pack abs on you. Mm -hmm. I was pretty good at it. Yeah. Um, and then somewhere along the way, I lost my motivation to only do that. Yeah. Like I don't mind it now, yeah. but it's it's a means to an end. It's not the ends me end means. And I think yeah. it's a little scary out there to charge at that anymore. But it took me twenty something years to come to that mm -hmm. realization. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say I'm all the way out of that. You know what's sad to me about it, uh, about our industry, is when we have that mentality, which we kind of have to, like that's, those are the people that are buying the memberships. Yeah. And so what we're doing is we're teaching fitness to fit people. Yeah. And we're just entertaining them. Like they'll get bored with GPP and they'll come to my class and vice versa. And so you and I are always under this pressure to create something new and exciting to keep the fit people entertained. And then meanwhile, there's 90% of our population who wouldn't dare come to one of our classes because it's intimidating. Yeah. You know, they don't know that you and I could like really help them modify and taper because they just see all those fit bodies and they're, you know, like I, at the Capitol last week, I went and did yoga at the state Capitol and there we had two wonderful teachers, hundreds of people. And I looked around and everybody on that mountainside looks good in yoga pants. And from the perspective of the people who really, really need yoga, they're not going to step into that even though it's like inviting and fun and accessible, it doesn't look like something they could relate to. And then the catch-22 of that is without those people looking good in the yoga pants, you might not even, the other ones might not ever become inspired to go do it. It's, it's a weirdness. I know, it's really tricky. So I'm trying to figure that out now, like how do we get to those to the people that need it, the aging Americans. Men are coming into yoga now more than ever. And oh. I'm so glad to see that we've made it more accessible to men. But you know, what about people that are injured and coming back from injuries or overweight or, you know, our kids need this movement and this, you know, so badly. How do we get it in those hands? Yeah. You know? Yeah, well, that's the conundrum, isn't it? Yeah. That's the, that's the tough part. I'm glad to have gotten into it myself recently. Mm -hmm. um, I've written this story and put it on my blog, and nobody read it. But I had a, <laughs> um, I had a really weird experience. I saw visions. I, I went, so I went to. Um, I was driving past Twenty First Yoga just down here. I, I used to live down just yeah. down the street. So I was driving past that, and I looked up, and I was like, I gotta go do yoga tonight. And I don't do yoga. I'm a cowboy, <laughs> right? I'm a manly man. Don't sit and get in touch with our feelings ever, mm -hmm. and then we don't stretch. That's dumb. Yeah. Like that's not. It's a waste of time. Yeah, I, I mean, if I if I can't get a bigger biceps, why would I bother? <laughs> so, but I had this had this impression that I should go in, and I went in, and the lady at the front desk. There were so many people, and the lady at the front desk was like, "Are you here to do yoga or to the to the event tonight?" And I'm like, "Yep." Sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sign me up. It's just, I think she could see. She was like, "Oh, um, the the sound bath event, the the, the meditation event." Yeah. She's like, "The one where we lay on the floor for two hours." So I'm like, "Yeah." You're gonna have to take off your work boots. <laughs> yeah. She's like, "This is you understand that this isn't." I'm like, "Yeah. I mean, it's just laying on the floor. Anybody can lay on the floor." And she got that smirk in her eyes, just like the one you just made. And she's like, um, "She takes me aside, and she was so polite." But she was like, um, "This is, this is probably a little over your head. I, I wouldn't suggest going in there tonight. I wouldn't. This is a long time, and it's weird and stuff." And I'm like, "No, I want to." To make a long story short, I pushed my way in, and I, I made myself do it because then it became a pride thing, which is the thing about men in yoga. Yeah. And 
I, I sat on the floor and 12 minutes in, I remember it, 12 minutes in I was like, this is, uh, I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> and I've made a big mistake. And I don't think that I can lay here for the rest of the two hours. And then I made myself lay there longer mm -hmm. and something happened. I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, I started seeing colors, and I, I, I started seeing things, and it was weird. It was weird, and that's when I knew. Weird and cool. Yeah, it was yeah. cool, unless you're not ready for it. Yeah. I, I guess I would have had it if I wasn't ready for it, but yeah. that's when I knew. That's when I knew there is a side of this physical thing we do that I'm not addressing very well mm -hmm. with what I do, mm -hmm. and there's that's a healing side. Yeah. And maybe the energetic side, like when we start to see ourselves as not just flesh and bones, but like we are bundles of energy, you know, yeah. and literally like if you just think of your nervous system as like this big string of electrical impulse moving around, like we really emit energy yeah. and therefore we feel energy from each other and from light and from sound and from color and when you start to tap into that, uh, that make that again makes everything you do better your physical work better your sleep better your Communication better when you tap into that you know, harness your energy. Is that what you teach? Do you, do you teach that because I've been to yoga classes and I've been very disappointed I haven't had the pleasure to come to one of yours yet, mm -hmm. but I've been to yoga classes before not here But in other times when I've tried it and it was about the body mm -hmm. and they were pretty funny about I wanted to learn what these things were that mm -hmm. you're pranayama and so that's that thing pranayama. Mm -hmm. Pranayama is the Yama. practices of breath. Okay, mm -hmm. so I, I wanted to learn and I had heard some of this stuff and I wanted to go in and learn and they don't teach you. They won't. I don't yeah. know why. Well, it, the, one possibility is that the teacher doesn't know. They've just been trained to do the physical postures and a lot of trainings really do stop there with the newer teachers. Just memorize the sequence, here's how to keep people safe. Um, but it, the word you just used is brilliant, pranayama. Yama means to restrain. Prana means this life force energy that we're talking about, this aliveness, this vibration that we are. So breath practices are designed to help us restrain or expand that energy depending on what you want to do. If you're feeling anxious, you need to draw it in. If you're feeling kind of low and lethargic, you need to pick it up. So yes, we teach that, but I don't know that a lot of newer teachers have the language to, to describe like why they're doing what they do. So I think you're kind of getting it, even if you don't like, get the words along with it. Yoga is designed to give you all that, even if it's not taught by the mouth of the teacher. I think okay. your body knows that you're getting it. Yeah. But we, you know, I joke around a lot. There's, there are eight limbs to the yoga that we practice here in the West. And one of those limbs is asana. It's the physical postures. I like to joke around that, you know, 150 or so years ago, that limb broke off of the tree in India and it made its way to the West. And we think we've got the whole tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and um, That's all I ever thought it was. Yeah. I had no idea it was anything else. But which is awesome because the way we are in the West, we, we want immediate results. Yeah. We want to get bigger, better, faster, stronger. And the, the asana can do that for us. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, that's the, we climb on that branch. The 40 million Americans that are doing yoga right now are on that branch. They're finding their way to the rest of the tree. Yeah. And they will. Now we need to get more people on the branch. And that's how we do it. We do it through the physical practice. And then one of the branches is pranayama. The breathing. The breathing. Yeah. And then we get up to the higher branches, which are all about meditation and mindfulness. And that's where all the good juju what? happens. <laughs> the secret to that, because I went in and I had that really cool experience, yeah. and I have tried and tried and tried to duplicate that. It was yeah. an accident. I didn't mean to have it, yeah. and I had no clue what was going on when it was happening. Yeah. What's is there a secret? What am I missing? Yeah, I think there's a secret. I think if we do the Wizard of Oz and we pull back the curtain, and we're going to give away all the secrets right here, but it's as simple as this: we live in our heads. 24 7 basically most of us can't even sleep well at night because we're so in our heads we're so consumed by thoughts the loop of thoughts um, those thoughts have us disconnected from our bodies 
we have us disconnected from each other. We just live in this loop of blah, 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 mm -hmm. right? Yeah. In yoga, we call that the monkey mind or chitta vritti, the chatter of the mind. So if I picture a monkey at the zoo bouncing around in his cage and you give him a banana, what does he do? He stops bouncing Settles around. Down, right. He sits in a corner and eats his banana and for a few moments he's calm and then he goes back to his bouncy, right? So that's what we can do with our mind is, is we say, throw the monkey a banana. So if I give you a breath pattern to follow, if I, t if I coach you to breathe in three, hold, breathe out three, hold, feel it in a certain place in your body, your monkey has a banana for a moment. It's got something to do. And so the loop of thoughts isn't happening. And for those moments, that quiet mind is a really beautiful place to be. Yeah. So you found yourself in a sea of noise, of sound. Right. The tones that were designed to speak to different parts of your body, different chakras. Um, your mind was consumed with the experience of sound. And maybe even some like curiosity or some fear about it or whatever. But in those moments, your mind wasn't ruminating on everything it had to do. It was like here and now. And it started to get quieter and quieter and quieter. And then when you start seeing colors, that's what it feels like to be inside of a quiet mind where there's not all that rambling. Yeah. So it can be as simple as a breath. We're trying to teach kids in schools how to just take a few deep breaths. And for those moments, find some quiet. That's brilliant. Yeah. I mean, so start simple. there. Yeah, start um, there. Can you teach me that? Like, is there a, I, I hate to put you on the spot. But that's what we do. Like yeah. We yeah. Um, can you teach me a couple of, of ways of getting back into those quiet moments? Because here's my problem. Mm -hmm. My problem is that when I try, I came in today and I tried. I laid down on the floor and I put a blanket in her. I got turned off all the lights, mm -hmm. and all I could do is blip. Like there was a second that maybe my head cleared, and that was it. That's mm -hmm. all I could do, mm -hmm. and yeah. it's a real strain for me. Yeah, I I'm it. imagining it has to be the same for everybody. Completely. Yeah. Completely. Um, and I think you used a really important word there, tried. You know, I think we try so hard that we try ourselves out of experience. Yes. It's like trying yes. to fall asleep. Like I'm so intent about falling asleep, I can't fall asleep. Yes. You know, so um, so yeah, do you want to do, you wanna do one right now? Do you, you want to practice one? Yeah, would you mind? Okay. If, you know, somebody wants to follow along. Follow like, along. Help. Fast oh. forward if you already have that quiet mind and you don't right. need this. Um, here's one that I find to be really helpful. And you can do this um, anytime, anywhere. You can actually even do this like sitting at a red light. I'm going to have you close your eyes. Of course, if you're doing this when you're tired, you don't close your eyes. But um, we're going to just sit with a really tall spine. So that's the first thing is we want the tall spine so that the energy can rise from the base of the spine through the crown. And then we'll just start to take some deep breaths together. The inhale will help us to feel taller. And the exhale will help us to feel a little more rooted to the cushion or the floor. Should I be looking somewhere? Should I be not worried about where I'm looking? I close my eyes because when I see the mat or the phone or the floor, I have thoughts about that. Then my mind automatically like follows that sense. So here's another branch. Another branch is um, uh, pratyahara, which means not letting your senses pull you off center. So that would be an example of like, like I look and I see something and my, I start telling a story about it. Yeah. So for me, I close my eyes, but you could also look down as long as you're not like seeing things that are making you okay. distracted. All right, so here's the breath again, tall spine rooted down into the earth. I'd like you to picture in your mind uh, like a river of flowing water and in the middle of this river is a huge round stone and the water comes down and it just starts to go over that stone you can kind of picture that that really strong yet soft water coming up and going down and you kind of can't tell where it stops going up and starts going down there's just this flow so we're going to create that sensation with our breath. As you inhale, imagine that water or the breath coming up the back of your body and rolling over the crown of your head like it does over that stone and then just spilling down the front. And then inhale again to pull that breath up the back of you. 
and then let it just roll across the crown of your head and down the front of you. So as we take these breaths, you start to picture in your mind kind of an oval shape around you or maybe even like sitting inside of an egg shape. The breath moving up the back, spilling over the crown of the head and down the front of you. And now bring your attention a little bit more to that very top point and pause just briefly in the breath before letting it go down the front of you. See if you can find that place where the inhale stops and the exhale begins. And really get curious about that space between breath. Stop that oval shape, blink your eyes open. Given time, I would have you do that for five or seven or ten minutes of just like continuing to bring your mind back to that shape and that rhythm. I did it. I did it just there. Yeah. I was able to go. Like there was some radio I, silence. Yeah, I did it. So the yogis teach that all of our truth can be found in the pause between our breaths. If we can just That's the part find that it. helped me. Yeah. The pause part helped me. Yeah. Yeah, so you can do that. Like, I need an image in my mind, but you could lay on your mat and just inhale, pause, exhale, pause. Let the pause get a little longer. Sometimes I'll do this. So just follow my finger. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Hold. I love that. Hold. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Hold the emptiness. And then you can close your eyes and use that kind of a breath pattern. So these are the things we're teaching kids in schools. We're teaching teachers to give kids like just this one thing. Now everybody close your eyes and do 10 square breaths. And I'm gonna get goosebumps because in those 10 breaths, like the room is silent. The noisiest junior high classrooms are silent. And those kids are finding what you just found for a moment. And now they can start the task at hand. Yeah, I feel right this second, I just feel relaxed. It's the first time too, because I've been nervous to talk to you all day. And then, <laughs> so I know, and, and then in the, and then during, you know, you have this anxiety and like all these things that I'm thinking about today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In that moment, I got to be in the moment. There's, I, I feel, uh, what, healthier, right? more energy. I don't know. I and maybe good. just present, like right now in these moments. Like I feel like I'm living my life. Yeah. I'm here for my life. I'm not ahead of myself, thinking of what's next. I'm not regret. Should I have said that? That was stupid. And I'm like right here. Yeah. And that's uh, that's where our stress lowers that's where our relationships improve that's where we sleep better at night the more we can like be present for the moments of our lives you know so i love that i think those techniques are crucial and we can pass those on isn't that the difference i think in a nutshell that's where i've changed my career mm -hmm. along the way is i've been trying instead of trying to go out and create this life 20 years later, I'm trying to live it. Mm -hmm. There's a difference maybe. Yeah. And maybe I didn't speak that well, but. No, you spoke it beautifully. And uh, there's an author I really love, John Kabat-Zinn says, when you're not present to this moment, you have abandoned your own life. Yeah. And I've lived a lot of years ahead of myself, you know, mm -hmm. or looking back at the past and like to, to live the life that you're here to live is pretty spectacular. Spectacular. Yeah. If we would slow the hell down long enough just to look at it. Yeah. And feel right. it. And yeah. Be it. Just be here. Just be here. <laughs> you know, the gift of like sharing space and time with you. You've got so much on your plate. There's so many people demanding your attention. I'm full of gratitude right now for these moments that we, you know, that we get to share. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. What a, what a fun interview. <laughs> Thank you for it. You're that welcome. Was, for you to shake my hand. Yeah, and, and I, I, was, I was like, well, I don't know. 
Um, what's next for you? Where are you right now that we can find you? Um, where, if somebody wanted to learn more about these practices and techniques, you, you don't teach them, right? You just teach people that want to teach. Um, I, I do some public classes at 24 Hour Fitness. So I have two, one class a week at Sugar House and one at Trolley. Those are my public classes. And occasionally I have the honor of teaching for Lululemon at some of their community events. Yeah. Um, mostly I'm training teachers. My company is called Yoga Assets. And um, any given semester we have between 15 and 20 new teachers training. When's the next one start? We start again on August 23rd. Okay. So that's a 200 hour program and it's right here in Mill Creek, a beautiful space. Um, so, yeah, I'd love to talk to anyone that wants to find out more about teacher training. Um, one of the things my teachers have to do is get out in the community and volunteer their time. And we feel strongly about teaching in a place where you have experienced pain or hardness. And so we say, go to your wounds. And um, so I have teachers teaching in domestic violence shelters. I have people working with the homeless population, uh, refugee population. We're working in the Utah State Prison, in the jails, in schools. Um, uh, teachers teaching to the LGBTQ community. So um, as a result of that, we have formed a nonprofit called yogaforward.org is the website um, to allow us to do more of that which is take yoga where it isn't so that's what's next for me is getting that other 90 percent of our population right. served with these awesome techniques and yoga forward if somebody wanted to support that how would we do it you just go to yogaforward.com is there a org thank yeah. you mm -hmm. is there a way that, that you could use support absolutely so money is the for we're trying to get funding right now to do some cool things um, already we've had some really good support so I was able to in my training at the Utah State prison I was able to use the funding that we've gotten to, to purchase some brand new um, materials and books for the women down there um, which is great because we've been taking in used books and for them to have brand new books like they just feel special yeah. they feel like like they're really getting a treat and they are um, so yeah you can donate on the website yogaforward.org it's set up for a $55 donation because I turned 55 this year so uh -huh. I'm just doing 55 for 55 but we'll take 550 oh yeah or whatever else <laughs> or $5, whatever yeah. part of that yeah so uh, that's that's what's next well you come back I haven't scratched the surface and I want to leave it there because I think what we just had happen I think that was magic okay good and um, awesome. it was really hard to, to schedule a time, she's super busy. Would you come back and talk to us another time? I'd love to. I would love to just love keep to. picking your mind, and I think this is one of the missing links in the health and fitness world. Yeah, let's all get present, right? We all forgot about the health part. Yeah, look how easy it is, right? To I just know. do what we just did. Yeah, thanks so much. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. You're doing good things in the world. I hope so. <laughs>